If you've been working with GraphQL long enough, you'll know about GraphQL Yoga, a batteries included GraphQL server that included subscriptions, support for uploads, and much more. It was created by GraphQL, a backend as a service GraphQL framework that no longer exists. GraphQL moved to Prisma, a database ORM, and GraphQL Yoga, well, that kind of went stale and a bit abandoned. Thankfully, the guild picked this project up. So 2022 is looking like a great year for building projects with GraphQL Yoga. The new GraphQL Yoga also integrates with Dino, Cloudflare Workers, ExpressJS, Fastify, Coa, Next.js, Velkit, and more. It works with both server and serverless deployment environments. Whoa. The guild are experts with GraphQL, and they have tons of different libraries to support and help you build with GraphQL. So it's great to see GraphQL Yoga now part of this. So let's quickly dive in and see how we can create a GraphQL server with GraphQL Yoga. GraphQL Yoga is a fully featured GraphQL server with a really focus on easy setup, performance, and a great developer experience. You can learn about all of the features of GraphQL Yoga by visiting the website and the documentation. We'll explore in this video how you can use plugins with Envelope. We'll also explore very briefly how you can use GraphQL subscriptions with server sent events, and we'll explore some error masking and much more. There is an extensive getting started tutorial on the GraphQL Yoga documentation. Here you can walk through creating a server, creating a query mutation, and configuring a database, as well as working with relations throughout your GraphQL schema. Inside the GraphQL documentation, we can see here that it's really easy to add two dependencies to get going. In this video, we'll be using the GraphQL Yoga slash node package. If you're working with other integrations such as AWS Lambda, there are other dependencies that you'll want to install as well. If you're working with Cloudflare Workers, the dependency will be a little different. We'll install the common package here. And this is because this is built on the agnostic HTTP handler using the fetch API request and response objects. So to get going inside of my project, I'm going to install both of those dependencies and we'll install GraphQL yoga slash node and we'll also install GraphQL itself. Now that's installed, let's go ahead and port create server from GraphQL yoga node. Then we can define a new server by passing create server and then we can pass server.start. That's all we need to get going with GraphQL Yoga, but that's not gonna get us very far. What we'll actually want to do is pass some schema to our server. We can see with create server that we can pass many different configuration options and properties to our server for GraphQL Yoga. By default, GraphQL Yoga works with a convention over configuration approach. Because we've no schema, GraphQL Yoga will automatically fetch us a default query that's built in just for demonstration purposes and to check that everything is working, but it also provides us a subscription as well. So we can see using server sent events that here we have the time being updated and this is using the server sent events approach with GraphQL subscriptions. This isn't going to get us too far, so why don't we go ahead now and define our own schema. Inside of here we can pass schema and then we can pass the type definitions and the resolvers to our GraphQL server. Here we can provide type query, and then inside of here we can pass our own query. And in this case, we'll just return a string. Then we can provide the resolver for our query, hello. And we can do this in the same way as we are familiar with using other GraphQL schema definition language implementations. Now if we go back to graphical and we run the query to fetch hello, we can see here that we have hello world in our response, and that's coming directly from our server. And that's probably one of the quickest ways that you can create a GraphQL server with some type definitions and resolvers. If you're working with a code first approach instead of a SDL approach, then you can just pass the schema and you can use tools such as make executable schema and pass in your type definitions, resolvers, and any other properties. If we now update our type definitions to include a mutation to speak a word and also listen to a subscription using the speaking subscription that returns a string. Now, if we update our resolvers to include the mutation to speak and also the subscription to listen to who is speaking, we can import the utility create pub sub, and this allows us to publish and listen for events instead of our event bus. If we define pub sub here and we call create pub sub without passing any arguments, GraphQL Yoga will take care of all of the default conventions for us and give us a pub sub bus that we can send messages to and listen messages from. Now, instead of a graphical, if we run our subscription to listen to who is speaking, instead of another tab, we can now then send a mutation. We'll use the mutation speak and we'll pass a word yoga. Now, if we execute this mutation, we can see here, no matter what I do inside of our mutation here, this will then be updated using server sent events to our subscription that's listening for anything happening with that pub sub. 
As we work with other APIs and services and databases inside of our GraphQL Yoga resolvers, it's quite common that we'll run into errors. One of the actual built-in features of GraphQL Yoga is something called error masking. This will mask any errors that happen inside of your resolvers so they are not leaked to the end user through the GraphQL endpoint. We can demonstrate this here by simply throwing an error, something went wrong. If we save this and go back to graphical and we now run our mutation, we can see here that we have an unexpected error. This isn't the error message that we define inside of our GraphQL server. You can of course disable this feature. Now if we run our mutation, you can see here that the message is now something went wrong. But what if you wanted to keep that for the majority of your application, but you knew when you wanted to return an error to the user, you actually wanted to pass that on? Well, actually we can import this special GraphQL Yoga error class, and we can instantiate that where we have throw new error, and this will then be returned to our GraphQL endpoint. GraphQL Yoga also makes it very easy to integrate with something called Envelope. Envelope is a great plugin system for GraphQL that gives you great flexibility on customizing what happens at the GraphQL execution phase. Check out the video on GraphQL Envelope if you want to learn more. If we explore the plugin hub for Envelope, all of these different plugins here work with GraphQL Yoga out of the box. If we explore the Use Response Cache plugin, we can see here that we can install this Envelope plugin. Now with that installed, if we then import Use Response Cache, then inside of our server, we can pass a, an array of plugins to GraphQL Yoga. He will use Response Cache and will give it some custom properties. He will choose to include metadata when we make a request to our GraphQL server. We can see here with our mutations that we have some extension data. This is telling us a little bit about the response cache that we've just installed. If we then run the query to fetch the contents of hello, we can see here that we have a cache hit false. If we run this again, we have a cache hit true. And this is great. With one plugin, we've been able to enable GraphQL caching at our GraphQL server level. Check out the video on the use response cache plugin to learn more about how this works and how you can customize this to your needs. There is so much we didn't cover in this video with GraphQL Yoga, but hopefully this has given you a quick insight into what's available out of the box with very little code. I encourage you to check out the documentation and follow along with the tutorial to learn more about how GraphQL Yoga works under the hood. We'll explore future videos where we look at GraphQL Yoga context, file uploads, testing, Apollo Federation, and much more.